You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. If you'd like to learn more about the Bearded Theologians, you can go online at beardedtheologians.com, where we have past podcasts, blogs, and a couple items for sale. So check us out, beardedtheologians.com. Thank you for listening, and enjoy this week's show. You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks and Zach Bechtold. So this week, um, we're going to continue our uh, kind of famous prayer uh, series by looking at um, a prayer of Susanna Wesley. Um, This can be found in uh, 528 of the United Methodist Book of Worship. For those of you that have that uh, sitting on your shelves, um, and for those of you that you don't, um, I'm sure you can find it um, on the interwebs. And so I'm going to ask Zach to pray that prayer. Of course, if you will pray with me. You, O Lord, have called us to watch and pray. Therefore, whatever may be the sin against which we pray, make us careful to watch against it. And so have reason to expect that our prayers will be answered. In order to perform this duty aright, grant us grace to preserve a sober, equal temper, and sincerity to pray for your assistance. Amen. So, man, as you hear that prayer, what sticks out in Susanna Wesley's words to you? Um, I like the notion at the beginning to watch and pray. I, that's just something that sticks out to me um, from the uh, from the beginning. As even as you were praying it, even as we were looking at it, it was the first thing that 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 jumped out to me to watch and pray. Um, and, and I think about like all the things that we could do that for. Um, you know, we're in the back to school season time. You know, praying for our students, praying for our teachers, praying for support staff, praying for the administration. I think that that's key. Um, and, and, you know, all the things are going on in our country and our world, like that's definitely, we can watch and pray. Um, and, and then like, like the flip of, um, you know, careful to watch against sin and, and be aware of our sin and, and asking God to help us be aware of it, to watch for it and to help us, you know, um, and then that line of equal temper and like, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I understand, like, it, like the way I read it, it's like a balancing act of, of trying to like keep your temper, but like also like, you know, um, I'm like, how does that work? Because <laughs> it, in my experience with temper is it just boom. Um, I guess it'd be taming temper would be the way I, I guess I would look at that. And so, you know, I, it's a good prayer. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Susanna Wesley, um, I'd encourage you to get to know her a little bit. Um, I confess she's the founder of Methodism as she inspired John and Charles to do their thing, but definitely laid the foundational work for John and Charles. Uh, she was definitely um, one of the earlier, pre- definitely an early Methodist preacher. I mean, she was having services in her home um, and she was leading them, um, which was very influential to John in, in his stance on women in ministry. And um, and how he viewed them and utilized them. And, and I think, you know, the same thing can be, you know, like I, I've enjoyed um, a few years ago, Ashley kind of wanted to get to know Susanna. And so she read a lot on her and, and I kind of joined her in that, that journey and, and really enjoyed getting to know how she ran her household. I mean, she, man, there's a reason why those kids, uh, especially John and Charles did what they did and it had everything to do with her. And I, and I, I guarantee, I, I guarantee they knew this prayer um, and, and probably had to pray it many times a day for whatever i mean maybe like go to your corner and say your prayers i mean i don't know but like don't quote me on that it's, i'm not a historian um and so zach as you, as you look at this prayer what, what comes up with you well one equal temper um because through all of that thing your temper was not equal on anything um you were very up and down on the roller coaster of emotions uh <laughs> no I, what i love about this uh one like you said, Susanna Wesley has such a, uh, a deep and stored history throughout the Methodist church, um, but in spirituality in general. And I love, 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 love this prayer and the fact that it is to the point. She does not mince words. It is calling us to watch and pray. It's calling us to, to look inwards and in which we pray for, um, to, have this reasonable expectation that if we come with the right intentions, if we come with the right heart, that God will answer our prayers, that it's not putting the emphasis on God, do this, do these things for us, answer our prayers, but it's 
coming with the humility to say, hey, God, we're human. Here's what's holding us back. Here's what's holding us down. Here's what we're struggling with. Here's what we're lamenting. Here's what we're celebrating. Here are prayers. Um, and that it puts the onus on us to say, hey, if we come sober, uh, which for me doesn't mean uh, so much drunk as it does um, in, in peace of mind. Um, come with the equal temper doesn't so much mean angry as it is coming with the right attitude. Um, and then sincerity, being honest and open with who we are. Those are the things that stick out when, when we pray of, God, here's, here's who I am. Here's where I'm at. Um, hear me. And uh, I will wait in response. I will make room to listen. I will make these things uh, so that I hear, um, hear your response in return. And uh, I love that. You don't find many uh, female voices in prayer uh, in a lot of different places. And I love that that's one of the places we start in our book of worship is with Susanna Wesley. Um, and I think she sets a beautiful example of praying this way. It's and, this you know, easy. And, and I, you know, as we were trying to kick around what to do today, um, you know, like that was one thing that was in my mind. It's like, man, we don't, I mean, it'd be nice to have, you know, a, a famous prayer that was done by a woman. Cause there are out there. I mean, there are a lot out there, um, but like to have one that's near and dear to our movement and our um, theological, you know, kind of groundwork, um, you know, that's huge. I mean, she definitely laid the foundation for John and Charles and how she well, did things. It, you talk about there being female prayers out there. There are, but they're recent in right. the last 50, 100 years, maybe at, at most. You're looking at somebody who prayed these prayers and laid this foundation a couple hundred, 300 years ago, you know, a long yeah. dang time ago when women did not have voices in the church uh, and certainly didn't have voices to help lead a foundational movement to where we are today. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's what's, that's, you know, key when we think about that is to, um, and, and I think it's a good thing to ask yourself, like, who are you, like, as you're looking at prayers, like, I know people look at prayers, I know people, you know, I mean, it's, we all do in some way, shape or form, like, what influences or voices are you utilizing um, to shape your spiritual life? I think that's a good thing to, to reflect on. And are you using a multiple of, you know, influences? Or are you just one a particular flavor or spectrum and you know i think that that's a good thing good test of faith um to stretch yourself and to look at pe prayers you know um you know, i mean we can even i mean you know we're talking about famous prayers of the past um i think only the newest prayer that we're gonna look at will be the one we'll look at in a couple of weeks with um the serenity prayer and we don't even know really when that one was written it's just attributed to reinhold niebuhr in the early 1900s but like that could have been like we we really don't know um and so like you know, I think it's a good thing to to have ourselves stretch ourselves like that and look at different voices and be open to that because it does help us grow and we can see a perspective that we wouldn't see otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and when I brought that up to you, I could just see the angst and you're like, oh, great, 18th century uh, language, which is not easy to is read. Terrible. Yeah. And it's it's hard to discern. But then when we found the one we were looking for, we're like, wow, there's like this is a good prayer. And I think it is a good prayer. I, I mean, I, I you know, it'd be good to use in worship occasionally, um, and it would help draw people in um, and and center them and and watch and pray. I mean, how hard is that? I mean, we, we I don't think we encourage people enough to do that. Um, I don't think we encourage people enough to do the watch part, right? <laughs> yeah. um, we we do the pray part first. Well, we're going to pray, uh, but we don't do the watch part before or after or in the middle or anywhere very well. What would you say? It's because we, we want to watch an answer or we want to pray an answer or pray and have an answer or pray to answer I or pray. I think we just want an answer. I don't oh, know that right. we necessarily want to pray, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Maybe that's, maybe that's it. All right. So that's the end of the uh, series. Now we've, we've just agreed that all these prayers are just more about an answer than they are prayer, which not really, but um, I think that's a good but thing. I think, to think but about. I think that's the case, right? Um, especially in recent history, say the last 20 to 25 years, uh, or even longer, um, prayer has become less about the petition of being human, uh, the humility of coming just as, as the people we are with our failings and our successes and making room to hear, to watch, mm. um, and more about the, hey, hey, God, um, here are my expectations, and my expectations are you do this thing for me. Um, I used to, I still use it. I used to 
uh, use a reference in campus ministry uh, or an illustration of God's not our spiritual Coke machine. We can't just go put our quarters of prayer in and hit the Coke button or the blessing button and get it out. That's not how prayer works, but that's how we treat it. Of uh, Prayers in, answers out. Yeah, I think it's a good place to land. Um, how are we watching and praying? Mm -hmm. um, and watching and praying. And don't worry about what happens after that. Mm -hmm. And just surrendering. I think it's a good place to land. And so we want to encourage you to um, go to our website at beardedtheologians.com. We've got a lot of great content up. And we've got some gear for you to buy and you know, all that stuff. Like um, Most of you know the drill. But I want to encourage you to, as you're listening, um, whatever app you're using or however you're listening to us, like, give us a thumbs up or give us five stars and then write a review for us. That helps get our name out there a little bit more. It helps with the, um, uh, you know, the analytics algorithms. Of things and <laughs> algorithms and all those crazy cookies and things. And so, you know, that only helps us. And so, um, you know, please do that if you've got the time. And so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. I'm Zach Bechtold. Thanks for checking us out. Guys, I want you to subscribe and like this video. And put that thumbs, push that thumbs up. Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all social media outlets. You can check out old episodes and more information at beardedtheologians.com. Thanks for checking us out.